I will call this meeting to order. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to LPRCA's first meeting of the year 2022, held the fifth day of January. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the LPRCA YouTube channel at a later date. Just to highlight a few agenda items, this meeting includes appointment of the board chair, appointment of vice chair, committee appointments, also a municipal partner member vote on the proposed 2022 Conservation Authority budget. As board members, you are aware that due to changes initiated by the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, specifically the new Conservation Authority Act, I am no longer eligible to serve as the position as chairman. So at this time, I want to thank each of you for your support, your participation and dedication as board members during my time of chair. It's truly been an enjoyable experience. And with that, we'll move to the uh, revised agenda item. You will note that there's been an added item in the latest version of the agenda that was sent out under new business item 8C, December 11th, 2021. It's the Lake Erie flood event report. So that will be, that has been added. Is there any declaration with respect to conflict of interest? None noted at this time, Madam Clerk. So I will uh, now pass the meeting over to Judy to introduce the election scrutineers. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So we have Kim Earls uh, tonight that will be assuming the chair position and Allison Earls, um, it will be assuming the role of scrutineer to assist with our annual election. So over to you, Kim. Thank you. It's so nice to be here this evening, see all those friendly, familiar faces. So um, uh, at this time, I'd like to assume a position of chair and I declare the position of chair and vice chair vacant. Uh, we have a motion on the floor that the LPRCA board of directors appoints Allison Earls as scrutineer for the purpose of electing officers. And can I have a Mover and a seconder for that, please. Mover, um, Tom. Tom and no. Valerie. Uh, all those in favor? Carrie? Um, so the election will be conducted in accordance with the act as follows. The election shall be conducted in the following order. The election of chair, who shall be a member of the authority. The election of vice chair, who shall be a member of the authority. The acting chair shall ask for nominations to each position and only current members of the authority who are present may vote. Nominations shall be called three times and will only require a mover. The closing nominations shall require both a mover and a seconder and each member nominated shall be asked to accept the nomination. The member must be present to accept the nomination unless the member has advised the secretary treasurer in writing or by email in advance of the election of their willingness to accept the nomination. So the floor is now open for nominations for the 2022 Long Point Region Conservation Authority Chair. Do I see any nominations? Uh, Robert? Uh, hi, Kim. Uh, I Just before I make my nomination, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank uh, I guess former chair Michael Columbus uh, for his uh, dedication and good work to the authority over the last uh, uh, few years. It's been a pleasure serving on the board with uh, you as chair, Michael. So uh, the act being what it is, I'll uh, uh, make a nomination and that nomination will be my good friend and uh, uh, fellow board member, John Schulten. I don't see him. I know he's in that little square in there somewhere, but uh, I'd be pleased to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, nominate uh, Vice Chair John Schulten to be the uh, uh, incoming chair. Are there any other nominations for the position of chair? Second call for nominations. And a third call for nominations for the position of chair. Seeing none. Oh, uh, Robert? I was just going to move that nominations be closed, uh, Kim. Okay, uh, so uh, motion that nominations for the LPRCA chair. Uh, we have a mover, mover, Robert, and a seconder. 
Uh, Peter? Uh, all in favor? Carrie? Okay. Um, Mr. Shulton, will you allow your name to stand for the position of chair? Yes, I will. All right. Then. Um, okay, so uh, member John Shulton is declared the Long Point Region Conservation Authority chair for the 2022 uh, term. And now we, um, sorry, Dana, is this up already? 14? Yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, the floor is now open for the nominations for the 2022 Long Point Region Conservation Authority Vice Chair. Nominations for that position, Peter? Uh, just before I make my nomination, Madam Chair, I would like to also express my thanks to uh, former Chair Michael Columbus for his leadership at this uh, board. It's been very much appreciated and I've enjoyed working with him. And I would like to take this opportunity to nominate Mr. Columbus for the position of Vice Chair. Thank you. And do we have any other nominations for the position of Vice Chair? Calling for a second time. And finally, calling for a third time for the position of Nominations for the position of vice chair. Seeing none, I have a motion on the floor that the position for nominations for the LPRCA vice chair be closed. Can I have a mover? Valerie and Ian as mover and seconder. All those in favor? Carried. Okay. Um, and Mr. Columbus, will you allow your name to stand for the position of vice chair? Yes, I will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, Michael Columbus has declared the Long Point Region Conservation Authority Vice Chair for the period of 2022. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call on the Vice Chair uh, to say a few words. Thank you, Kim. And thank you to my nominator, Peter. Appreciate that, and I appreciate uh, the kind comments that I've been have been attributed to me as uh, past chair. <clears throat> and I look forward to working closely with uh, John Shulton, the new chair. We've worked together in the past, and together, John, uh, Judy, and I have made a good team in making uh, decisions for the board. So, despite recent changes to our mandate and the fact that we currently face some challenging times, we will continue to strive for effectiveness and efficiencies in keeping with our strategic plan, uh, delivering quality service to property owners and residents of our watershed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and at this time, I'd like to call on the new chair to see if we would like to say any remarks. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank my, my nominator, uh, Robert Chambers and the board for their confidence in uh, bringing me in as chair for 2022. And I wish everyone a happy new year. Although we are off to a negative start for 2022, let's hope after this month of January, it gets better. I wanna thank my Columbus for chairing the board for the last three years and has been very capable has given good direction and it was a joy working with him and I hope to continue working with him as vice chair. I'd like to thank Judy and her staff who have been great to work with the last three years in our municipal term. And uh, we hope that this coming year we can carry on and work together as well as we did. There have been many challenges to deal with, and there will be more. However, as board and staff, let's all put our best foot forward to make 2022 another great year for the LPRCA. As this is a municipal election year, we don't know what 2023 will bring, but let's all focus on 2022. I wanna thank you for your support. And at this time, we will continue with our meeting agenda. Thank you. So, 
Yeah, I was going to say, if you want to thank you and Allison for the service, and thank you guys for the Thank you for the service. So I thank Kim and Allison very much for your uh, work this evening. I know it's a big job <laughs> and a token of our appreciation. Thank you, so thank you very much, and have a good evening and happy new year. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Take care. So, carrying on with the agenda, our next item is the 2022 LPRCA committee appointments. I'm going to turn this over to you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, in the in the package uh, agenda package, page one, um, this is where we can uh, go through and. I think in the past, what we've done, if people have shown, have expressed their interest to be on certain committees. And um, if we have more, um, if we have more expression of interest than what we have positions, then we can um, have, a, have a vote. But I think in the past, you have worked it out amongst yourselves. So, Maybe we'll just start in with the, go through the recommendation. And so for the um, first one, um, it's the land acquisition chair and it was previously held by Dave Ferris. So I don't know if anyone else is interested or if Dave wants to remain or continue as uh, that chair there. I would uh, be honored to remain. Okay, is there anybody else expressing any interest in that position? Okay, so we'll put Dave Ferris, Dana? Yep. Okay, so going to the next one is for the um, Lee Brown Marsh Management Committee. Currently, um, it, it was John, and now John will be at that committee as chair. Um, and we need one other member to be on that committee. Judy, I would like. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, Judy, I would uh, like to continue on that the Brown Marsh Management Committee. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, put their name forward? Okay. Uh, so, Mike, it looks like that's yours. Um, so the next position, three positions we need is for the Bacchus Museum Committee. Uh, currently, it's Dave, Robert, and Tom. Is there any, um, maybe start there. Do you guys want to do me? Go ahead, Robert. Uh, Judy, uh, uh, or through, through uh, John to, to Judy, uh, I have been on the, the uh, committee in the past. This past year, I found it very difficult to attend the meetings because they were in the uh, the daytime, and my my working schedule conflicted quite often. Uh, so, uh, reluctantly, if I will remain on, if, if unless there's someone else that wishes to uh, uh, take the opportunity, it's a it's a it's a good appointment. It's interesting and uh, I think valuable to the uh, uh, certainly to Norfolk County and to the whole. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the whole area, but uh, I, I will stay on if there nobody else wishes to uh, take my place, but uh, I can highly recommend that it would be a rewarding experience if anybody does. Okay, thank you, Robert. Mike? Judy, through you, uh, or sorry, through the chair to you, uh, I would be very happy and honored to remain as a member of that the Bacchus Museum Committee. Thank you, Tom. Mike's got his hand up. Mike. Judy, uh, yes, I have served on that committee for quite some time as being as the chair of that of the LPRCA. So automatically, uh, John Shelton would be on. But if uh, no one else wants to put their hand up, I would be willing to uh, continue serving as a member of that. Packers Museum Committee. 
Okay, the only other person that's um, Dave would. Did you want to remain on that museum? I'm sorry, you have three now? Yes. We have two. You have Tom, have Mike, and who else? Sorry. Robert. Robert is willing to step aside due to his work schedule. If you're, I oh. think if someone else wanted to go forward. Well, I don't want to go nose to nose with Robert over this, but I would take it if Robert doesn't want it. I've been on it before and I'll continue. That's fine. I, I, I can make the meetings. That's it's good time. It's not in, all right, Robert's good. So it will be Dave, Tom, and Mike then. If okay. I will be looking over Dave's shoulder to make sure he does a good job. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Great. Thank you. Okay, so then the next uh, committee is the audit and finance committee. And um, the past year we had Ken, Valerie, and Dave. So um, is there any other interest or can I hear from you three? Uh, I would like to stay on it, uh, Judy, please leave my name. Oh, thank you, Dave. Valerie? Yes, I would like to stay on it as well, but if there is someone who wants to come on, I could be willing to bow out. Um, and Ken? Uh, it, certainly, I would be prepared to give the seat up if someone would like it. But uh, that said, I'm, I'm fine uh, to give it another year if there's no other takers. OK, I'll throw it out to the group. Is there any other I think. Uh... I think Ken would is an asset to that committee. He's brought up several points in the past that required consideration, and I'd really like to see him stay on there. Okay. I'd certainly agree with that. I hope Ken uh, considers staying on. So um, if there's another interest, we'll have Dave, Valerie, and Ken for the Audit and Finance Committee. So Dana will prepare the uh, motion to read out. Thanks everybody. So I have a motion in front of me that the LPRCA board of directors approves the following appointment for 2021, 2022, 2022. Dave Bears as land acquisition chair. Mike Columbus and the LPRCA chair to Lee Brown Marsh Management. <coughs> Thomas Shelley, Mike Columbus, Dave Bears, and the LPRCA chair to the Bankers Museum Committee. Dave Bears, Valerie McDonald, and Ken Hewitt, the LPRCA chair and the LPRCA vice chair to the Audit and Finance Committee. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Robert moves it. And he in second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Thank you very much. So I have another motion for the minutes. So I have a motion here that the minutes of the LPRCA Board of Directors meeting held December 1st, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Tom moves it. Peter seconds it. Are there any corrections or omissions or discussion regarding these minutes? Seeing none, I will ask for the vote, those that approve. Any opposed? Seeing none, that's carried. Thank you. Oh, okay, so I keep going, right? Yeah. So business arising for the minutes, there's none. Review of committee minutes, there's none. Correspondence, there's none. And then we go to development applications, and that is Number A on your agenda, staff approved applications from page 11 to 15. 
I think there's 10 applications. And Leanne Mossy, I are yes, you I'll be presenting. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, as John, as uh, Mr. Chairman just talked, um, we have approved 10 applications for development since the December Board of Directors meeting. The report summarizes the location and nature of each of the development applications. And the map on page 15 of the agenda package provides a visual of where in the watershed the approvals have been granted. This report has been provided for your information, and if you have any questions, I can happily answer them. Are there any questions from the board to Leanne regarding these 10 applications? Hearing none. I have a motion here that the LPRCA Board of Directors approves of Section 28 regulation applications as per the staff report dated December 15, 2021. And I have a mover and a second here. Ken? I have a, I have a uh, question, actually. Go ahead. I, Because I, I, I've got so many different kind you know, I, I can't seem to locate that uh, particular report. I did submit um, something on my behalf. So I did declare, didn't declare an interest. I'm not sure if I actually have an interest if my application, which was approved as part of this report. So I'm looking to Leanne for a direction on that because I don't want to obviously vote for a report that has my address on it. Through the chairman, um, member Hewitt, you're okay for this one. Um, okay. For the next report, just keep an eye on it because it'll most likely be brought forward in February. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm just, yeah, I can't seem to find it here. So, but that's great. Thank you. Welcome. So, do you want me to read the motion again? Okay. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Mike moves it. And eight seconds. Any discussion regarding this motion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Those in favor? Any opposed? That's carried. Then we go to, we have one new application, and that is. Uh, on page 16. So uh, Leanne, would you like to speak to that? Yes. So LKRC staff are recommending approval of one permit application for the month of January. The application is to demolish an existing residential structure in Long Point and replace with a larger residential structure, detached garage, and a septic system. We're seeking approval for this permit application. And if you have any questions, I can answer those. Are there any questions regarding this application? Hearing none, I'll call the I'll read the motion that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the staff approved Section 28 regulation application report dated January 5th, 2022 as information. Can I have a mover in a second? Stu moves it and Ian seconds it. Is there any discussion regarding this application? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Those that approve. Any that oppose? None. It's carried. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along. Then we have the uh, 2020 and 2021 permit application turnaround times, and that is on page 19 to 23. And again, Leanne, I'm going to ask you to speak to this. So LPRC staff are bringing forward this report for your information regarding applications turnaround time for permits issued under Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. This report focuses on the 2020 calendar year and 2021 up until the end of November 
of last year. So a little bit of a summary um, with respect to timelines that we try and aim to meet. MNRF, which is now MND MNRF, policies and procedures for service standards for permit applications were set out in 2010. And those are outlined on the agenda, page 20. In 2015, LPRCA staff updated target service standards to achieve quicker turnaround times and decisions on applications to try and improve customer service. These dates are also on that table on agenda page 20. In addition, Conservation Ontario Council endorsed a client service and streamlining initiative in 2019 to improve plan review and permitting timelines in response to the Ontario government's concerns regarding delays and approvals. The Conservation Ontario Council timelines are mandatory for high growth conservation authorities. LPRCA is not considered a conservation area or conservation authority that is experiencing high growth. However, we decided to volunteer to park participate and work towards these service standards as resources allow. So that's just a little bit of kind of some of our standards that we try and meet when we are delivering our permitting process. So for 2020, we issued a total of 296 permits throughout the year. We classify permits in minor and major categories. So minor is kind of um, smaller, less likely to negatively impact flooding or erosion, and then the major applications are kind of more extensive development, higher risk of impacting flooding, erosion, wetlands. So for 2020, 78% of minor applications, um, the applicants received their permit within 15 calendar days. 94% of those total permits of the minor ones were issued within 30 calendar days. So for minor permits, the average turnaround time was 10.7 calendar days, so a little over, um, or sorry, a little under two weeks to receive those. For major applications, 77% of applications were issued within 30 days, and 100% were issued within the 90 days. The average turnaround time is 21.3 calendar days, so roughly three weeks. So that was for 2020. For 2021, LPRCA issued a total of 257 permits from January until the end of November. 83% of the minor applications received permits within 15 days and 96% within 30 days. So the average turnaround time for minor applications was just under 10 calendar days, which is 9.7. For major applications, 80% of those received permits within 30 days and 100% within the 90 days. The average turnaround time for major applications is just under 20 calendar days. For the most part, LPRCA staff have been able to achieve our customer service standards over the past two years. It is expected that staff will bring forward a report at the beginning of each calendar year, outlining application turnaround times for the previous year. This report has been brought forward for your information and if there's any questions, I can answer those. Does anybody have any questions for Leanne? That's quite a report, Leanne, and, and uh, the uh, Watershed Services Department is doing a tremendous job from what I can see. Are there any questions? Hearing none, I'm going to uh, read the motion that the LPRCA board receives the 2020 and 2021 permit application turnaround times report as information. Can I have a mover and a second? Peter moves it. Seconder. Mike. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, those that are in favor. Thank you, that's carried. 
So we'll go to our next item, which is Leanne has a lot of stuff on this agenda. <laughs> Customer service plan update, planning and regulations program, 24 to 28. Go ahead, Leanne. So for this report, um, some members will- I can barely hear you. Can you Sorry. get closer? Just getting my connection back. Okay. There we go. So in 2017, LPRCA staff brought forward a customer service plan to aid with permit turnaround time, in addition to supporting our service standards, which I just highlighted in the previous report. A lot of that was to improve customer service and transparency regarding policies that we use for decision making. The purpose of this report is just to update the board regarding the changes that we have implemented since the 2017 customer service plan to seek the board's endorsement of additional action items to improve customer service and permit turnaround time and seek the board's direction to direct staff to update our 2013 policy to implement Ontario Regulation 17806. So the actions that we've completed are outlined at the bottom of page 26 of the agenda and continue on to page 27. I won't go through all of them, but a couple of the highlights were just um, in 2018, we did hire um, a third planner to kind of help handle the increase in permits, inquiries and all that. In 2021, an engineering graduate was hired kind of in that third planning position to focus on technical review. Previously, the technical review was shared um, with the water resources analysis position. So there was a lot on that person's plate. So we kind of divided that up. So that's one of the things we've done. In the budget for 2022, a third planner will be hired um, to aid with succession planning as we have one of our planners is eligible for retirement later this year. Another item was just posting all our policy documents online on our website for transparency and just kind of help people try and navigate um, where we come up with our decision making. In addition, um, we updated floodplain mapping for the Lake Erie shoreline in North Oak and Holden counties. And we also updated riverine floodplain mapping for the most flood prone areas. So that's kind of a few highlights of what we've done in the last few years, just trying to improve customer service and transparency. So while we were completing the previous report, the application turnaround time, we did an analysis of how we could improve customer service standards and looked at the reasons why some of these applications may have took a little bit longer. And one of those is that um, some of these applications the 2013 policy to implement our regulation only allows the general manager to approve certain types of applications and the remaining ones require board approval. So we've identified that sometimes that results in applicants waiting longer for their permits. So we are suggesting that, or we're re recommending that the 2013 policy to implement Ontario Regulation 7806 be updated to allow the general manager or anyone acting on her or his behalf the ability to approve any application that LPRCA staff are recommending approval of. As we know, these meetings, um, of course, they only occur once a month, and no meeting is usually held in August, which is one of our busiest times of year. If supported, staff will bring forward the updated policy document at a later board meeting for approval and staff would continue to provide an information report to the board regarding all applications that have been approved. Another initiative that we're looking for so endorsement of is just to continue updating our regulation area mapping. These updates will have to come to the board for approval to post and consult on. In addition to preparing guidelines and kind of frequently asked question memos to provide more information specific to common applications. So someone can come online if they wanna do some minor shoreline protection 
they know exactly what we're looking for and answer some of those questions. Post periodic information meetings with contractors and consultants when public health guidelines <laughs> allow us to again, and also prepare a customer service commitment to be posted to our website, outlining our commitment to improve customer service. So it's intended that these recommended actions will continue to improve customer service and application turnaround times for applicants and anyone doing work in our watershed. As staff continue to implement these actions, we will report to the board and bring forward any additional items we believe that will aid in achieving these goals. If there's any questions about some of our recommendations, I'm happy to answer those. Are there any questions for me, Ann? Just a comment, oh, Peter. Not a question, Mr. Chairman, but just a comment in general that uh, through this report and the previous one, um, I'm very encouraged by the by the um, the actions of the staff here and the the goals of of improved customer service continuing on uh, the metrics that they're choosing to uh, take a look at year over year in terms of improving customer service. It just shows a business first kind of attitude at this place. And um, I very much appreciate that. And I think well done. Well, I, I can echo that as I listen to Leanne speaking, I say to myself, you know, any way that we can improve customer service and, and uh, be user friendly, uh, that's a plus for LPRCA. And, and I think this is a very, very positive report. And I appreciate your presentation, Leanne. Mike. Yes, just to uh, extend commendations to the watershed planning staff. And I just wanted to highlight a couple statements on agenda page 25 that I thought are worthy of uh, notice. Under the, under the title of the permit process, staff strongly encourage applicants to first contact LPRCA's office to discuss plans, what to expect during the permitting process and whether drawings and studies are required. And then further on down, there's another paragraph that reads, if an application is submitted that does not meet LPRCA policies for the administration of Ontario Regulation 178-06, staff will work with the applicant to adjust the plans to meet LPRCA's policies for a favorable recommendation. I think I, I really like that and I wish all of our municipalities would follow that same rule. It makes for a good quality engagement of our staff with the general public. I agree 100%, Mike. Any other uh, questions or discussion regarding this report? Hearing none, I have a motion that the LPRCA board receives the customer service plan update as information and that the LPRCA board endorses the customer service plan action items to prove customer service and permit application turnaround times and that the LPRCA board direct staff to update the 2013 policy to implement LPRCA's amended Ontario regulation 178-06 to reflect the action item. I need a mover in a second. So, yeah. Ian, is there any further discussion? Those that are in favor, that's unanimous. That's carried. Thank you. So then the next item in our agenda is the LPRCA budget vote, which is page 29 to 32. And I believe Aaron, Aaron is going to speak to this one. Mr. Chair. Uh, so the purpose of this report is to present the draft 2022 LPRCA budget to the membership uh, as prescribed by the LPRCA administrative bylaw and in accordance with the Ontario regulation 139-96 municipal levies. Uh, on November 10th, 2021, uh, the board held its uh, budget meeting to review and discuss the proposed budget with the senior management team. Uh, the board of directors recommended the 2022 draft budget 
um, be circulated to member municipalities for a 30 day review and comment on November 10th. Um, in accordance with the Conservation Authorities Act Regulation 139-96, um, the budget vote will be calculated by a weighted vote. Um, the chart is provided on page 30 uh, for each member of the, uh, of the board. Uh, the vote will be uh, taking into consideration attachment one, uh, the 2022 proposed Ontario Regulation 17806 Permit Fees Planning Review Act fees uh, in attachment one. Attachment two, the 2022 proposed Conservation Area User Fees as set out. Uh, attachment number three, uh, the operating budget in the amount of $4,797,561 and requiring a municipal operating levy of $1,724,259. Uh, the 2022 capital budget in the total amount of $511,250 requiring a general municipal levy of 381,700. Uh, finally, also in attachment three, uh, the proposed consolidated budget in the total amount of $5,308,250, requiring a consolidated um, levy of $2,105,959. Uh, if anyone has any questions before the vote, I'd be glad to answer them. Are there any questions for Aaron? Hearing none, then I'm going to read the motion. That the LPRCA Board of Directors approves the following recommendations regarding LPRCA's 2022 operating capital budgets. Number one, that the 2022 proposed Ontario Regulation 178 slash 06 permit fees and planning act review fees be approved as set out in attachment one. Number two, that the 2022 proposed conservation area user fees be approved as set out in attachment number two. Three, that the 2022 operating budget in the total amount of $4,797,561 and requiring a municipal levy operating of 1,724,259 be approved as set out in attachment three. Number four, that the 2022 capital budget in the total amount of 511,250 requiring a general municipal levy capital, <coughs> excuse me, of 381,700 be approved as set out in attachment three. Number five, that the proposed 2022 consolidated budget in the total amount of 5,308,250 and requiring a municipal levy consolidated of 2,105,959 be approved as set out in attachment three. I need a mover in a second. Dave? Seconder. Is there any discussion? Then we need a recorded vote. Pardon? Yes. So Dana is going to request a recorded vote as our board secretary. Valerie Donald representing the municipality of BAM. Yes. Robert Chambers, County of Brant. Aye. Ken Hewitt, Haldeman County. Yes. Stuart Patterson, Haldeman County. Yes. Valerie Donald, Township of Malahide. Yes. Thank you. Crystal Chapp, Norfolk County. Yes. Michael Columbus, Norfolk County. Yes. Thomas Shelley, Norfolk County. Yes. Ian Rabbits, Norfolk County. Yes. John Schulten, Township of Norwich. Yes. Peter Eatma, Township of Southwest Oxford. Yes. Dave Barris, Town of Tilsonburg. Yes. 
And uh, that is unanimous, Mr. Chair. That is carried. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to move to the 2022 tree order confirmation. And as Paul, um, is he here? Or is yes, he? Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Yes, Chair. Yes. Can everyone hear? You sure can, Paul. You sound great. Okay, great. Um, annually, LPRC staff uh, purchase tree stock from select nurseries based on operational demand, quality, and inspection. The Forest Ontario's 50 million program requires stock to be obtained from three approved nurseries in order to be eligible for the program. Somerville Seedlings, Fergus Tree Nursery, and Pine Needle Farms. And staff have been granted special permission to purchase stock from St. William's Nursery. The nursery su supports a variety of Healthy Watershed Service Department's uh, restoration programs. And if I can move this down, I'll tell you what they are. <laughs> um, and private land tree planting program, 50 million tree planting program, and clean water projects. But the majority of the stock goes to the 50 million program. In 2022, staff have orders for 67,000 100 trees at a cost of $74,690. The 2022 budget stock numbers are a projection based on the program's inquiries and demand and may change prior to the tree planting season. The unit price of the trees or seedlings uh, has increased by approximately 10% since uh, 2021. <clears throat> the tree planting program revenue is funded by Forest Ontario and private landowners and there are no budget implications. So staff would like to remend, uh, recommend to the board of directors to approve the 2022 tree order of 67,100 trees at a cost of 74,690 for the spring 2022 tree planting season. Is there any questions? Are there any questions for Paul? Hearing none, I'm gonna read the motion. The LPRCA Board of Directors authorized the 2022 tree order of 67,100 trees at a cost of $74,690 for the 2022 spring tree planting season. Can I have a mover, please? Ken? Crystal. Oh, Crystal. Seconder. Ken it was a Ken move. Yeah. Okay, Crystal. Ken moves and Crystal. Crystal. Is there any discussion? Then I'll call for the vote. Those that are in favor. That's unanimous. That's carried. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And happy holidays, everyone. Same to you, Paul. So then uh, we have the added item number 8C, December 11, 2021, Lake Erie flood event. And who's going to speak to that? Leanne. Pardon? Leanne. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I apologize about the elite edition, but we thought it would be important to just let the board uh, know about. Uh, the de December 11th, 2021 Lake Erie flood event that occurred. Um, I'll just do a little bit of kind of a summary of the event as I assume not everyone's had an opportunity to read it. Um, so this report has been provided to the board for your information relating to the Lake Erie flood event that occurred on Saturday, December 11th, 2021. High southwest winds moved into the area on the morning of December 11th and continued throughout the day into the evening. Wind gusts of up to 106 kilometers per hour were recorded during this event and caused shoreline flooding and erosion within our watershed. LPRCA staff issued the initial flood warning the day prior, advising local flood coordinators, emergency services staff, and landowners that event would be occurring the following day and to prepare accordingly. In the afternoon of December 11th, staff updated this warning to reflect the latest modeling projections to provide the most up-to-date information for residents of these areas 
the media, municipal flood coordinators, and emergency services. LPRCA remained in contact with municipal staff and adjacent conservation authorities throughout the event. Staff observed various streets in Port Dover that were flooded and received various reports reports of damage to businesses and residential structures along the shoreline, primarily in Port Dover, Turkey Point, and Long Point. This event represented a 10-year flood and is similar to the November 15th flood of 2020. Staff continued to monitor the Lake Erie watershed conditions. In addition to this report, um, we're also under a Lake Erie um, flood warning as we speak right now, just due to the high winds that are occurring outside. And LPRCA staff, um, the duty officer is still on right now and kind of monitoring the conditions and forecasting models. And they're monitoring the gauges and updating municipal staff as we meet tonight. If there's any questions, I can answer those. Are there any questions for me, Anne? Thank you very much much to the end for the update. And since there are no questions, uh, I have a motion that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the December 11, 2021 Lake Erie Flood Event Report as information. Can I have a mover and a second? Ian moves it and second. Crystal. Pardon? Oh, no, sorry. Any discussion? I'll call for the vote. Those in favor? That's carried, thank you. That brings us to the end of our meeting. I thank you all for your participation this evening. And again, I wish you all a happy new year. Let's hope 2022 is uh, going to be a wonderful year for LPRCA. And this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>